What up guys, welcome back. This is of course your favorite airdrop expert Light here and today we are going to be diving into Bearer Chain, which has been covered by a couple of other YouTubers already but the thing is they're not me. They kind of suck at this whole research thing and miss out on pivotal information which might be a crucial part about the airdrop criteria which I'm obviously going to be sharing with you today. So Barachain basically is a liquidity based EV on blockchain. They are also kind of levying the IBC technology. So they are part of like these two different communities, both the EVM and also the IBC community, which is probably one of the big important parts that some other people have missed out on regarding Barachain. And they are using a Polaris VM, which is a form of an EVM that is using the proof of liquidity consensus that is becoming a more of a trend of like people wanting to have actual returns and yields for the things that they are depositing into these other EVM chains. It kind of makes sense. So it's a Cosmos native configuration. Now, Barachain has already raised over $49 million. So they are kind of like above a lot of the other chains in the space, for example, Manta. So Barachain is likely poised to be an actually quite valuable airdrop. Now, the question obviously is, what are going to be the criteria for it? Now, there are multiple as starters. I think the most obvious one is to run a node. I haven't looked into that too much as of right now, but people who have said that there's actually some kind of harder criteria to actually get started with the Barra Chain node. So it may not be as accessible financially as an opportunity for a lot of people in this space, but that's something I always recommend doing with these test nets because running out your own VPS and stuff like that is not exactly that expensive in terms of the opportunity cost because some of these you know, node runners have been getting 10k, 5k on these airdrops, amazing amount of money. But let's start started with the first criteria, which is the Galax page. And Galax already has like, well, half a million people are already participating on this. I mean, on the daily drop, there's multitude of different quests here, which you are able to do. And this is, by the way, daily. So it shows a very large number. That is because you can visit the bear chain faucet on a daily basis to be ineligible for this task. There are some couple of other things like visiting these maps and pages, which will be giving you amount of points. Right now, um, I should also have this one, by the way. And then you can also swap out and mint honey. And these are testnet quests. They don't cost you anything whatsoever to be eligible. And I'm pretty sure that these social media tasks are going to be a part of the criteria because that has been historically the case with NFT based communities. It's a lot about the social interaction. That's what these NFT chains and NFTs in general kind of live and die by the social amount of interaction, social interaction that you're going to be doing. Now, the one uh, partial thing which has not been mentioned on these other airdrop videos this is the first piece of alpha is the actual relationship between Celestia and actual Barrow chain because this is actually one of the partners here on the Celestius chain and we can read on to it what is that ideal like level of interaction how big is this partnership between the two projects but one of the criteria is likely or possibly going to be that Celestia stakers are going to be getting the Barachain token. It has been a custom within every IBC chain to basically drop in to other communities. This has been like kind of the way to drive adoption. Very few of the chains have not done any form of drops. Obviously, the other ones that could be on the list are Adam and Osmo and probably Injective for instance. But I think out of the IBC chains, the most likeliest ones are going to be Celestia and Adam because I think those are the ones that they are going to be, you know, pandering towards too. And I think Celestia is going to be getting the larger cut. This is obviously speculative, but I'm kind of like believing that they are going to be getting something here. Now, the other one that nobody has never talked about is actually the NFT collection by BitPierce. This was deployed back in 22 and it's only 2355 bit bears that have been launched 
and you can see the actual volume and the floor price kind of indicate that there's heavy speculation on that these people are going to be buying the NFT. Now, um, I have talked about this on my Discord and socials already when it was at 2 Ethereum. Sadly, due to my own, you know, liquidity problems, I was only able to buy it around 3 Ethereum. So I'm still up on my investment. And this is obviously a bit more higher and expensive way to get, you know, participating on this. But given to the high price of this project, I mean, the low point has been like, what, half an Ethereum or something? And so it's very likely that this is going to be um, one of those NFTs which are going to be getting a portion of the, NF you know, of the airdrop, probably the largest sum alongside with the validators. This is my assumption. That is why I'm invested on it. So this is another um, possible criteria because it can't be just testnet criteria because testnet is like poised for botting and anybody can do them and do multi-accounting. So there has to be some monetary attachment to the bear chain unless they're going to be releasing the bear chain mainnet and then do the actual airdrop. But it's probably very likely in this case that we are going to be seeing the launch of the token alongside with the mainnet. So now we finally get into all of the testnet stuff. So even if you're not doing the nodes, you don't have Celestia State, you still have the opportunity to do the Galax missions. And then there's obviously all of these things that are currently ongoing on the actual chain. And here are the five first dApps here. So what you can do is you are able to request these tokens throughout this faucet right here. And I don't know what is the exactly the amount of time that it's, you know, let me see, let me, can I already request another batch? Probably going to be telling us, okay, every eight hours you are able to request tokens from this faucet. So that's basically the way to go. And in case it wasn't clear already, there's also a Discord channel and Telegram, and those are probably going to be part of the criteria of being activity there if they're getting a special status there like Discord roles and things like that. Those are always going to be playing a, playing a, a part in that. So one of the first things we have here is Bend, and this is an interest app basically, and we are able to deliver a um, multitude of different tokens here. Currently, there's no barrel listed here, so I have to get honey, and then I'm gonna be supplying that, or I can supply Wrap Ethereum or Wrap BTC. Far as I know, there's no bridge available right now. If there's going to be a bridge at some point, you do want to actually interact with it as well. Try to bridge testnet Ethereum and things like that. So you don't have to rely too much on the faucet to get these funds. Next, we have uh, Perpetual Trading. And this is another place where we can use a multitude of different things. You want to have at least like 20 transactions on this testnet, maybe even more than that across multiple different days. Um, here, do we have a vault here? Actually, we can only deposit honey here once again. So um, I don't actually have honey right now. And then we have um, Bex, which is basically a place where you can swap a bear chain. So I'm going to be, for example, swapping 0 0.1, which is $19 here and then we're going to be getting some honey and now after we have done the swap we are going to be providing this honey uh into these platforms we just actually looked into so i want to supply some honey here once the transaction goes through let me actually refresh this and there might be some congestion here on the chain some people were already complaining about it um and that's just kind of like the way it is with these test nets maybe not enough rpc nodes and things like that are you know around approving the honey you don't have to really worry about the amount of honeys that are going to be approving here uh, because this is testnet stuff so you don't have to be really worried about getting rocked by a testnet thing and okay the transaction didn't go through or maybe it did and it just says something else let me actually see this again let's get back to that in a second and here on bex you obviously want to pull different liquidity here you can choose whatever you wants to do there's one that has three different tokens that's kind of interesting. Do they have a zap feature here? Um, apparently not. Um, and then there is BGT and this is, um, this is a governance page. And you can delegate your, I don't know, delegating your honey, I guess. This is another important thing. And obviously in IBC chains, we have governance. And governance votes are going to be um, important a lot. 
and those have been and yeah basically you can delegate things here so i could choose a validator okay this doesn't seem to work as of right now okay here we go polka chew and i think this requires um bgt okay it's crashing so there's like i said there's going to be some hiccups here some people have already talked about this and then there is another place where we can mint out st sdg usdc here by sweeping honey so here for example we can redeem honey for usdc once again doing approvals here and then Okay, and here we have now supplied this thing and then you can borrow obviously and claim rewards and things like that. And that's basically it. So you just want to interact, do swaps, provide liquidity and just keep doing transactions back and forth. It doesn't matter like the volume and things like that. Just keep doing active. Then there is this page here right now, which basically shows that multitude of different dApps that are being built right now. I'm not sure able, are you able to basically see on the screen because it's kind of blurry text, but there's like Bear Names, Honeycast, Ursodom Labs, Holy Held, Mijan Nidao, um, Barupla Coin, Arano Dex. So there are things already, Barrel Land, there's things already being built out on this blockchain and there's going to be multitude of these uh, AMM protocols and you know incubations and blah 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 and you just want to interact with these on the testnet you get their individual tokens probably and obviously you're going to be participating on the potential bear chain token but when it comes to these testnets it's really hard to tell are they going to be giving, giving a very huge amount of like tokens to the people who have interacted with the testnet that remains to be seen but are they going to be asking things like kyc and things like that because fundamentally like testnet is not just very smart because it's so easily bottable so that's why i really recommend doing the galax thing i recommend staking celestia and atom and if you're really rich obviously you can buy the bit bears you know nft because that's probably going to be also one of the criteria as well but remember, this is 10% fee, so that's pretty kind of hefty when you're going to be selling it back. I'm probably going to be selling it on a loss unless they're going to be doing a further utility uh, for the project down the line. But that's kind of like what we have right now for the bear chain. It's possible that the token release might only happen after the deployment of the mainnet, which is possible and possibility we should take account to. So if mainnet actually launches, keep doing also transactions there. But it's not saying that testnet transactions are worthless, but their weight in the actual pool might be lesser. But thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for other drop videos on the channel. I have a full playlist of them. And obviously, I do have my spreadsheets, which I should have, again, plucked in the beginning of this video. But I have been updating this on a daily basis, adding out new chains, new dApps across different criteria, showing which ones are active right now, which are in a speculative phase, and which are over. And there's also claim links for things that are over. Things have ended, but the claims might still be open. So it's worth checking out uh, whatever they're going to be open out. And then there's obviously the list which has all the currently going on EVM chains. There's a lot of them right now. And we are speculating most of these, maybe 95% are going to be doing some type of airdrop. So we are kind of early in that sense. And then these all these other non-EVM based chains like IBCs and other things. But I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. And obviously join the Discord and Telegram to be up to date with the latest AirDrop news because not all things are covered in these videos. So there's a lot of daily information that is getting passed throughout our communities and a lot of alpha there. But thanks for watching. See you soon in the next video.